Welcome along to Proposition's video series on how to set up your marketing and sales tech stack for less than $100 a month. I'm Simon and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to set up MailChimp uh, and Zapier so that your email marketing system is linked into your HubSpot account. Now this is a really, really important step um, when we're setting up the marketing and sales tech stack is this is going to enable you to not just send newsletters and email blasts but set up all of the automations you want and get everything really nice and tightly integrated so you don't have to do any double handling. Um, that's really important to me when I'm thinking about how we set this tech stack up because I just don't want to be touching emails, I don't want to be having to move data around, I don't want to have to be worrying about people not getting the right stuff. So without further ado, let's jump in. Um, for my purposes, I've already assumed you've got a MailChimp login set up. Um, if you don't, go and create one. It's super easy. Just go to MailChimp.com, click the button, sign up free, and away you go. But I've already got one right here. So let's get started. Now the first place you want to start when you're integrating these tools is with a list. So a list is just a collection of customers in MailChimp. Uh, I prefer businesses to have just one list for all of their customers. You can segment them, slice them and dice them with groups uh, underneath that. But if you've got them all in one list, it's best practice and it's nice and easy to work with. So to create a list, just come up here, click create a list. Uh, this is LinkedIn suggesting, do you want to create a new list or subdivide with the existing groups? That's what I was talking about before. To, that's the best practice. I want to create a list so I can show you guys what I'm doing. Right, so what's my list name? My list name is Test Zapier. My default from address is my from address. And my default from name is Simon at Proposition. Right, I've also got to remind people how they got on my list. Test email setup. Now for some reason this is my old flat, but that's fine. We don't worry about that today. Uh, any form fields, we don't need these because we're just going to be integrating HubSpot forms um, and HubSpot, so we don't need any of these. I will, wouldn't turn on any email notifications either. Right, now the next step when we talk about um, contacts is um, getting, the, getting the fields right, right? So if we're going to be collecting more than just these fields here from um, in forms in HubSpot, we need to make sure that they're set up in MailChimp exactly as they are in HubSpot, otherwise your process won't work. So to add a field, it's pretty simple, right? You click add a field, uh, the things you're going to be, want, want are text, date fields are really important, birthday fields, uh, possibly website fields might be quite useful, um, drop downs, which are going to be our one choice uh, select button and radio buttons, right? So those things are going to be really, really useful to you here. So if I want to set a radio buttons field, now that's going to give me the choice of a number of things for a customer. I could have test radio buttons, radio as my merge tag to make it nice and easy to remember. Um, and I can just have my choices here, test one, test two, and test three. Cool. So save those changes and I've added another test field um, to my list. Great. So obviously I've got no contacts in the list at the moment. Um, again, these will all come in from HubSpot when I'm ready. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to manage my list with groups. So you'll see here under manage contacts um, that I've got groups here click groups and you'll find out okay how do groups work so what this means is that I can use segmentation inside MailChimp once I've got information coming in to MailChimp um, from HubSpot to send different things now what I'm going to use groups for here is for different campaigns in HubSpot so for each campaign I'm running I'm going to set up a separate form in HubSpot we talked about how to set up forms in an earlier video uh, but what I really really want to do with this is I want to make sure that I can set automations off for different for different types of content, right? So let's say I download an ebook that has a follow-up video series just like this one. 
I want to make sure that I can put that person into the right group so that the automation triggers when they're added to the group. Um, then maybe, they, maybe that lead comes back um, six months later and signs up for a free consultation that has some emails that go off the back of that. Again, I want to create a different group for that. So I might create a group. Um, again, if people can, this is where you need to decide how um, to set this up. It's pretty easy. So the group category might be automations. Um, you're going to have ebook, consultation, and video series. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff up here because if, you, uh, if you're lo loading people in with an automation into these groups, you're not worrying about people selecting uh, what group they're going to be in, so the automation will take care of that for you through Zapier. Cool. So I've added those groups to my list, right? You'll see when I uh, add a contact to the group, um, I've got everything here, so I can just add myself in here. It's my old office address again. I need to update my Google Save Things. There's my radio button, and here are my groups, right? Um, so just so we've got a piece of data in there, so you can see how it looks. Here we go. Here's my subscriber record. Great, perfect. So now we're ready to go with our Mailchimp list. Um, what we want to do next is get everything set up with Zapier. So Zapier is a beautiful tool um, that's going to enable us to integrate pretty much any major app on the internet. Uh, last time I checked, they had over 400 plus. I'm sure it's far more than that. Um, but it enables us to get multiple popular apps working together. Now, Zapier is free at the level we're going to be using at. There's a whole pile of different options that are paid and that enable you to make it work faster, do more, do more tasks. But you're going to get 100 tasks and five zaps a month for free. Um, and what we're going to do now is build a zap between MailChimp and HubSpot. So I'm just going to get rid of Reich there. We're going to select MailChimp. Um, and we're going to make a zap. So a zap is basically uh, the series of um, the series of automations that Zapier does. It's the tar it performs a whole pile of tasks. So we'll create a test zap here. Um, the first thing that we've got to select is the trigger app, right? So our trigger app will be HubSpot, right? Um, now it would be easy to say we want to add. Um, a new contact um, to have the trigger as a new contact. That's not what we want to do here because remember the way that HubSpot works is that every single um, form updates a contact. It doesn't just trigger a new contact. And given we've got these five groups or three groups or however many groups we've got in MailChimp, each of which is tied to a form that we've got a campaign running for, we don't actually want to create an only trigger this whenever a new contact is created. If I submit one form today and one form tomorrow, we want to make sure that I'm added to the right groups for every form submission that I have. So we actually want to use this one here, new form submission, as our trigger. Great. We want to connect an account so we're not using one of our accounts. Right, I'm already signed into HubSpot here. So let's use our test portal as a test. Great, so whenever I click this, I'll be signed into HubSpot. It'll ask me to grant access for my permissions. There you go. Cool, so here's my hub, and I can rename that as Test Hub. Great, so I can tell what it is. Save and continue. Perfect, right, so now the name of the form, um, so there's just some default forms in here, um, so we'll use the default subscribe to HubSpot blog form. Sweet, um, click continue. Fetch and continue, we might not have a form submission on this. Uh, we do, test successful, beautiful. So there's your test form submission there um, with Brian Halligan, the CEO of HubSpot, as a sample contact. Cool, so the next thing we need to do is get MailChimp connected. So I choose MailChimp from the list. Uh, 
And what I want to do is create, so I want to add or update a subscriber. Easy, that's nice and simple. I need to connect my MailChimp account. So I've got my username and password in here. Um, I want to use the proposition account. And I want to test it. Perfect, success. Save and close, great. So now I need to set up my template. Again, I need to choose the list that I had before, the test Zapier list. Um, I need to tell, my, tell this where my fields are going. So I match my HubSpot email field by clicking this button here. Um, I can decide whether I want double opt-in, whether a confirmation email is required, I don't. Um, if I want to ups, update an existing subscriber, I have yes here. If I want to replace the groups, um, now I'm going to make, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a zap for every single form submission from a HubSpot form. So what I want to do is I want to replace, um, as I want to, sorry, add the add only groups, right? So because I don't want people to be outside, um, to be removed from a group in case they're already going through an automation, I just want to add to groups. So for example, for this one, I might add them to the automations ebook group. Great. So um, what I'm doing now is just checking all of this. Cool. And I want to click continue. Send a test to the MailChimp. Perfect, right? So now we know that that person has subscribed in MailChimp. Now, I'm going to need to set up a few more fields in this zap um, to get it right, but that's reasonably straightforward to do. Um, you'll see that when I refresh my Zapier test screen that I've got this contact here, bh at hubspot.com. Um, which is our test contact we've just uploaded. So that's pretty straightforward. Once I've done that, I finish my zap, I turn on my zap, and it'll happen as it says here. So if I need to make another zap, I can do that here. Um, if I've got multiple forms to set up. Um, so the proce process is going to be, if you've got multiple forms in HubSpot, you need to set up the forms first, um, integrate with them with your website, so that everything's testing and all hunky, all tested and all hunky-dory over there. Then you need to set up a MailChimp list to make sure that your MailChimp um, can accept, has the right groups in it to accept the subscribers that you're gonna start sending through Zapier. Uh, and then you set up your zaps. So each of them will be a new form submission with an ad update subscriber. Um, and then well done, you've finished the first step um, of getting all, everything integrated go create all the rest of your zaps uh, and come back for our next video in our video series. Thank you.